blood. And I wonder where he is. Oh, look. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Who are you? <laughs> Me. Who are you? <laughs> uh, well, I knew I was yesterday. I'm not sure who I am today. Where's that bloody mushroom going? <laughs> Alice, come back. Alice. <laughs> Hello. We decided to do this together for once. So yeah. here we are. So, Steve, I am going to be asking you today about this conjunction between Saturn and Mars, because I think it's a bit pokey and a bit sort of nebulous because it's in Pisces. It's a bit under the radar as well, because... Mercury retrograde, bloody Jupiter Uranus conjunction, the eclipse. Yeah. Great eclipse, by the way. Um, oh, it was fabulous to do. Did you, oh, I hope you all saw it. It was just yeah, so right. awesome. But yeah, under and in the background, there's this Mars Saturn conjunction mm. in Pisces, and Mars only conjuncts Saturn every two years. So you know, this is the only time it's going to conjunct it in Pisces. For so, yes, yeah, um, yeah. The last time would have been thirty years ago, 28, 29 years ago. And it's a bit, any Mars Saturn conjunction is a bit of a stinker. I mean, no, mm -hmm. just, there's going to be a, a fair few of you out there who've got Mars conjunct Saturn in your chart. So I would em we will emphasize the positives as well. But this mm -hmm. particular Mars Saturn in Pisces, it's there's a little bit of a insidious undercurrent about it in the background because it's kind of empowering a lot of residual unconscious anger i think i think also frustration don't you I, my understanding about a mars and in, in, in saturn it's kind of like trying to drive a car with the brake on that's a lovely analogy that's, that's how a good I... way of putting it yeah mm. yeah it's like you you want to get ahead but it's almost as if there's circumstances either outside your control or you're limiting yourself uh, and because it's in Pisces as well, it's going to be really difficult to get any clarity about what the real yes. blockage is. It's going to be yeah. like invisible forces that somehow just stop you. So, and that's going to lead to a sense of frustration, resentment, and a little bit of just like, I want to lash out because something's stopping me and I don't know what it is. And and so yeah, it, it it can be quite a bit of negativity around. And I short it, term on another way it could play out because there's so many there's so much potential here, isn't it? It's kind of like this passive aggressive behaviour. Well, that's again, that's perhaps a symptom of the negative side of Pisces yeah. with this. Yes, right. But there are positives as well. There's an equally strong positive way of looking at this as well. I mean, with Mars Saturn, you do it does release a great deal of physical energy. But you either use it or it uses you. Yeah. And if it uses you, you've got problems because then you get bumps, bangs, burns, bruises, arguments, disagreements, aggression, yeah. violence. But if you use it, then you can be projective and assertive. You can get a hell of a lot done. You go to bed at night feeling tired, but you know you've yes. achieved a lot. And it's not really setting out because it's in Pisces. It's not really setting out to do a specific task. It's mm. just like, okay, I'm going to get on with this and I'm going to do it until I'm tired. And and then when you've done it, you think, oh, I meant to do that all along. <laughs> and also for me, I think, uh, as we know, Saturn loves to ground everything, doesn't it? It loves yeah. to make things real. And structured. And structured. So it's quite hard for it to do that in Pisces. Yeah. I'm just wondering if, if another aspect of this is this sort of sense of a to bring the sort of like the spiritual warrior into this, this sort of, I want to make my spiritual understanding real, or I want to, I want to kind of with Mars there, I want, I want to, to make, I want to enter into a, a spiritual journey, a physical spiritual journey. Could it be something like that? That would think? be a really positive way of manifesting it. The idea we're here would be getting out in the garden and doing a bit of Tai Chi or Qigong and just, getting into your own higher vibration of physical energy and empowering your own body yes. to, to do something. Do you, yes. you and I are of an age. Um, the very first Marlon Brando movie <laughs> yes. on the on the, on the, waterfront. On the waterfront. No, no, the wild ones. Oh, was it the wild with, with, ones? With, with, with Lee Marvin and Marvin Brando and James Dean. Uh -huh. um, and, and there was these bank gang of bikers and Marlon oh, Brando right. was one of the with three young boys. Yeah, with a leather cap. Yeah, yeah. And his girlfriend turns around to him and goes, Johnny, what are you fighting against? And he turns yes. around, I don't know, what you got? 
And yeah. and I just thought, the Mars, Saturn in Pluto, uh, in Pisces, what are you fighting against? What's the problem? I don't know. Something. Something. And they'll just, it's a, it's a lashing out in, in just any direction, in any way, unless you're actually aware of the process that's going on, in which case you can then grab that energy and corkscrew, like shape it and twist it into something that's much more sharper, focused mm. and concentrated. It's like being a sledgehammer or like being a homeopathic laser. So what's come to me as you're talking about that, could that be rage towards God? We were talking about this earlier. I think it's more rage against, rage is a very good word, rage rage against the unknown or the unknowable because of the Piscean influence. There's an element of spirituality with that, yes, but it's also about the 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 disappointment or something. The, the yeah. disillusion yes. of of come on, it's got to be more than this. Yes. This is such an angry vibe. There's so much disenchantment in the world at the moment. So what is faith and what is belief, isn't it? I mean, what is God then? I would think, because I mean, there is so much, there's so much aggression, there's so much violence happening in the world. And it does make me it makes me question what what my understanding of something greater is and, and, and that, that we're all meant to come from this fantastic love which is very pisces very nebulous but you know we're living in a world at the moment that's very volatile and that's that's mars saturn isn't it? It, it it is yeah and when when there's no clear avenue of expression yeah and then you can't actually yes. express that energy in a constructive way it can actually turn inwards Yes. And then you get depression or despondency or despair, melancholy, and that can turn yes. into something quite negative. And, and that's why I feel a lot of people, if you're born with Mars, Saturn in, in your chart, you're going to know that you've got to find a way to express yourself. Otherwise, you do become disenchanted with the world, regardless of what yeah. aspect or sign or house it's in in your chart. You have to use your energy in a constructive way. Okay, so I have Mars in Pisces. Right. Okay, in the fourth house. And all very early on in my life, how that manifested for me was depression. Yeah. Okay, really turning itself, turning myself in, in, inward. And my journey through depression was actually through um, doing things like yoga and, and, and really going on a massive search of meaning and purpose. So that's what helped me to do that. I don't have Saturn in there, no. but that's how that's how Mars and my Pisces work themselves out. But many other people with Mars in Pisces, they 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 would use to it through swimming, for example. It, yes, yes. Or or through endurance yes. sports, where there's yes. no end target. It's just the idea of getting better and better over a period of time. Absolutely. So that's another way of Mars expressing itself yes. through this. This very sensitive ward. Uh, Mars is very sensitive. The other thing that, uh, that, that it's played out for me is I can see everybody's point of view and I'm not good at expressing yes, anger. But, but, but some of the greatest artists, some of the greatest architects or musicians had Mars in Pisces because Mars, Mars is dynamic and projective and assertive and it wants, right, I'm going to make some action and make some decisions. And Pisces is going, no, you're not. We're yes. going to dissolve it every time we try and do it. So in the end, that Mars energy doesn't get pushed out. It turns in. Yes. It goes into the bottom of your soul. And then it comes out again in some form of artistic creativity where you're not conscious of it. You just do it. And suddenly you've written this great song or painted a great masterpiece or drawn this great sculpture or... You found a bottle of whiskey or you've got depressed mm. or despondent yeah. because nothing has value and nothing has worth. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I do relate. To, I can remember feeling like that as a young person going, what is the point of all of this? I spent years thinking that and then finding this sort of desire to 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 to, to, to be a seeker. It's interesting this, so because. You know, you think of combinations with Mars with any other planet, even with things like Neptune and Pluto, mm. you can find ways of working with it consciously, you know, whether it be through physical expression, through psychology, through, 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 through whatever. 
But for over history, throughout thousands of years of astrological knowledge, Mars and Saturn have always been mm, a bit, bit banging and banging against the other. They are the two, the two malefics, as as Jupiter and Venus yeah. are the great benefics. Yes. yes. And Mars Saturn combinations. They're the very, very you, you see Mars Saturn oppositions or conjunctions in the charts of the great athletes, the people who use their physical yes. energy in a way that's sharp and focused and tentative. Because the uh, because the Saturn makes it real, it gives it, 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 it gives it discipline, and we all need that. Yeah, we and, need spiritual discipline. In fact, to have faith. But then it's it, it's it's not imposing strict boundaries on Mars because as soon as Saturn imposes boundaries on Mars, yeah. Mars is going to go. Want to bet? Yes. Yeah. Whereas yeah. whereas if Saturn goes, okay, try it this way. See what you think. Let's put some rubber boundaries. Let's let's be a bit of elastic into it. And yeah. Mars will go, all right, so I've got room to express myself. Mm. So you bend the rules sometimes without breaking them. Yes. Yes, it's so interesting, isn't it? This sort of sense of these two malefics in this very nebulous, watery ocean realm ruled by Neptune. Just think of it like another way of thinking of it. In three weeks from now, Mercury's going to stop going retrograde. The um, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction will be over yes. and Mars will be moving into Aries. All of a sudden, there's going to be an outpouring of energetic expression in a number of different ways. There's going to be a lot more direct action, mm. decisions and proactive situations happening. Without the foot on the pedal. Yes. Yes, it's going to get a little bit loose, and uh, and it could get a little bit in fast, mm -hmm. uh, irrational, rashly fast. Come come early May, yeah. Do you think it's going to just things? I mean, gosh, things are moving so quickly anyway. But with Mars in, it's only in, in Aries for about five weeks, isn't it? It's like whoosh straight mm, through it. Mm. But I just wonder how that's going to play out and how we can prepare. What we need to do now with this conjunction, how we need to, to prepare ourselves as Mars moves away into Aries, what can we do for ourselves right now to we, make this easier? We can deliberately choose not to let our buttons get pushed. Yes. That's a big conscious assertion. That straight away is taking control of the process, deliberately yeah. choosing not to let you. I hear what you say. I acknowledge you. I'm yeah. going to go away now and think about it, and I'll come back to you in a week. I'm going to count to ten, as opposed to a yeah. punch in the mouth often offends. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, um, and actually, three weeks from now, it's a really good time to launch, initiate, begin something new. It's the, the positive side of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction will be will be flowing through. Yeah. Mars will be moving into Aries. Yeah. Mercury will have stopped going retrograde. It will be in Aries. It's a great time for relaunch, for reboot, for refreshing. And to kind of bring something down from the higher realms that you can manifest. Yeah. And that, that, that gives you meaning and purpose in life. And, the, and it sort of it gives you a grounding or you can make that manifest in your life. Trust. To kind of trust the messages from the universe, would you say? Well, yes, and to actually not only dance with it, but be intelligent enough to recognise that where we are now is a pretty bonkers time. It's pretty crazy yeah, out there at the moment. Really... And it'd be very easy with all of these different yeah. combinations, but particularly with Mars Saturn, to allow yourself to become super depressed. It'd be very easy to think there's yeah. no hope. And we were talking about this earlier. There's a lot of people out there now who seem to be giving up. And yeah, on of so confused about what life's about anymore, mm. isn't it? And so angry about my mm. way is the right way, and everyone else yeah. is wrong. It doesn't matter yeah. what country you're in. Yeah. The the polarity of humanity at the moment, I've never seen it this extreme. Mm. And in the very short term, it could get worse. But by May, start of May. We're going to start getting resolution. This doesn't mean it's all going to be sweetness and light, but we will get actions taken in a way that's going to be clear. I don't think we'll feel held back so much. Mm. I think this Saturn thing is is held. Mm. It's this sort of being held. I'll tell you what's just come into my mind, and I don't know if this 
means anything to you, but this, I've just, the words held to account has come into my mind. We're just entering now a nine month square from Saturn to Jupiter. Jupiter's going to be in Gemini, yeah. Saturn's going to be in Pisces, they're going to yeah. be square to each other, both yeah. in mutable signs. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of questioning around the boundaries and flexibility of people. Yes. Yes. How, mu how much are you going to push it and how much are you going to go, well, wait a minute, I've, I've, I've had so much, I've had enough now, I think I'll stop. Uh, I'll take the top 10% as opposed to the top 80%. Mm, and it's I think for every I think we're both coming from this place of it's really about taking responsibility for ourselves and oh. trusting what we put into the collective is has got to have some form of positivity. It's full of fear and negativity at the moment. And we, that's our job, I think, isn't it? I, I've been really pushing this in my personal videos. Yeah. In the weeks, you it's know, it's, the it's, it's one planet, way. but eight billion different worlds. That we are all responsible for our own perception. We are all responsible for the way we see yeah. the world. And if we choose to apportion blame to anyone else for the way we are feeling or the way we are dealing with yeah. it, whether that feeling, whether that blame is on another person mm. or on God, however you see God as being, or on the state or whatever, then you're abdicating your responsibility to yourself. Yeah. And, I, and the other thing that's coming into my mind is um, every time you see a baby, just just send it love. I mean, what a journey that baby's going to be on. Children being born now, what a future they're going to potentially have <laughs> well, in 30 years. you know, so it's about, I think it's about really being compassionate to our own baby inside us. Ooh, good yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Good point. I like that. And then the baby's out there. The inner child. The inner yeah. child, the yeah. inner child work. And and then this, you know, Saturn for me is the, the good father. Well, you know, it can be the good father. It's a fathering, isn't it? And a lot of us didn't get good fathering. And mm. through, you know, not blaming anybody. Um, but it's just how do we how do we understand what fathering means to us and looking to somebody or that sort of that that energy within us that that mm, what is it the sort of the you know the moon is the mother and the and the sun is the father and we need we need to parent ourselves well and I think this is maybe an opportunity to look at the male aspect of it, whether we're a male or a female the sort of the male to look at masculinity yes what yeah. does that mean to us and how do we have a relationship with that yeah it boils down again to the basic meaning of Mars Saturn conjunction. You can either be aggressive and confrontational, yes, or you can be projective and yes. assertive, yes, which is different, very different. Yeah. Still the same energy, different sides of the same coin. So, is there anything else that you'd like to say just to to wrap up? Only that we are in the craziest time of the year. In fact, we're in the craziest time of the last three years since since the start of the pandemic, and it's. By the time we're a month down the line now from here, we're going to start seeing results of this time. So, and, and then those results are going to act like fishing lines being thrown into the future for the next three or four years at least. So actually this time is critically yeah. important in terms of deliberately choosing not to let your buttons get pushed. Be yes. it, you, you weren't yes. born on this planet to react. You were born on this planet to act. And sometimes mm. that acting, the best way of acting is to choose not to. Yes. And that's intelligent. That's maturity. It's wisdom, even. Was that's it? Saturn. The domain of the wise. Yes. Absolutely. It's Saturn. So, yeah. yeah, just just don't give up. Keep going. Don't expect massive results in the short term. And just persevere. We're all in this together. Yeah. So let's just be kind to each other as we all go through this incredible time well, of transformation. We're beginning to sound a bit altruistic, aren't we? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the humour, folks. Even in the darkest of times, mm. humans are the only species on this planet who have the ability to laugh at themselves and take the piss out of each other. We've never, there's <laughs> never been a species on planet earth in all of its history, that can do what we do with each other. We can laugh at ourselves and laugh with each other at each other. Don't forget to find the humor, even through the tears. So on that note, we're going to wish you so well and looking forward to celebrating the, the great conjunction in a couple of weeks time. Yes. 
And next time, we'll be on separate screens. We'll be on separate screens. <laughs> he hasn't moved in, I promise. Bye now. <laughs>